Welcome back. Being an experienced arts correspondent may not have been the most obvious route into crime fiction, but our next guest has successfully walked this not particularly well-worn path. Yes, Ortiz, arts guru Sinead Crowley has just written her third novel, One Bad Turn, and she joins us now. Good morning to you, Sinead. Hi, Sinead. Good morning. Thanks, Thanks for, for the arts guru. That's not <laughs> art guru. Someday, I think that should yes. be supered now on your packages. <laughs> exactly. Um, but of course our viewers will know you from um, covering all of the arts and the culture mm -hmm. stuff for RTE. Uh, but you've managed to carve time out to write your third novel. Yes, yeah, I have. Um, however, I did it. Sometimes I don't remember myself. Yeah. Um, by writing at night, I suppose, really, yeah. Okay. Arts and Media correspondent with RTE by day, which I love. But I also love uh, reading crime fiction, yeah. writing crime fiction. But, you know, since I was very young, I've loved reading. And I have to say, when I first started to read adult books, we all have that moment where we cross over to the adult section mm. of the library for the first time. Yeah. And that would have been Agatha Christie for me. You know, so from Nancy Drew to Agatha Christie. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. that was the path. <laughs> and from then on, I always loved books that had a twist or a bit of yeah. a mystery about them. So I suppose I always wanted to write a book, mm. but when the idea finally came, it was crime fiction, psychological yeah. thrillers. That was the area definitely I wanted to. Uh, and to you, you're, you're the, your starting point for your books is very interesting. It's, it's, a, it's a picture in your yeah. head usually. That's, that's how, it, how it works for you. That's the thing. People often ask, how much plotting do you do? Yeah. And the, the terrible secret is not much is the answer <laughs> because I like yeah. to see where it unfolds. But yeah, for this one, One Bad Turn, which is the third one, I had this idea or I had this image of these two women in a room mm. and I knew one of them hated the other and they used to be close friends and now one of them hates the other and wants to do terrible things to her. And so that was the strong image I got. Yeah. And initially I had a completely different idea of who they were, but that didn't work. Actually plotting the book didn't work, so I had to start again. Yeah. And I just started to go back into who are they, how do they meet, what were their lives like, and that's how the story unfolded. So I literally worked backwards and worked yeah. in the book as it happened. St St Stephen King has a book called On Writing, which I read many years ago when I had delusions of writing books myself. But anyway, and he, he describes writing books in a similar way to the way you're describing it. He's like an archaeologist with a mm. brush, and he just brushes away until the story reveals itself. And that's kind of what you're describing there, is it? It is a bit. And actually, yeah. you mentioned that book. If anyone wants to write a book, I would recommend Stephen King's on yeah. writing. And I read it myself at the yeah. beginning of this process. But yes, I do, if, if I try to plot, it doesn't really work. Even though I write crime fiction, two out of the three books, I actually change the whodunit bit by the end of it. Really? So that's how little, yeah, that's how much the story kind of evolves. As you write the characters, they, they assume their own identities to an extent, you know, and yeah. they do things that surprise you a bit. And this one in particular didn't end so up the way I thought it You're almost surprising yourself as the, <laughs> the writer bit. and the creator of it. Yeah, and I'd like to think that maybe the reader is more surprised. You know, if you're writing it not quite sure what's going to happen, then hopefully they're not. Yeah. But yeah, that is it. I went back into their lives. The two women, they meet at when they're 12 at a 12-year-old birthday party, then they meet again at 16 at a mm. teenage disco set in 1980s Dublin, which yes. was great fun and <laughs> didn't require much research. Yeah. And then they meet again when they're young mothers in their 20s. And all along, every time they meet, it's at a pivotal moment mm. where one has an impact on the other and helps the other out in some way. Yeah. Then they lose touch and then something happens to blow the whole thing apart and to ruin one of their lives, basically. Okay, so it's, it's, it's ultimately written in two halves, would that be fair? Yeah, you, you see, I mean, it starts off, the action starts off straight away in this room. It's a doctor surgery, as it happens, where one absolutely hates the other and, and you're trying to find out why. And then you go back and back and you see all the meetings and you discover what has happened to one of them, to Eileen, to make her hate Heather so much. Okay, and she the recession has been yeah. uh, ideal fodder for you as a writer as well, hasn't it? Yeah, what I discovered was, as I say, I didn't plot it as such, but what I discovered was it is impossible to write about contemporary Ireland without mentioning the recession, mm -hmm. you know, because it touched everybody. And what happens in this book is it touched people who didn't expect to be touched by it. Yes. You know, Eileen in particular is growing up in a middle class area in, you know, the traditional nice house. Mm -hmm. She says at one stage that she lives in the house that looks like the child's drawing. You know, it's the yeah. box with the smoke coming out of the mm -hmm. chimney and the nice front door. And she ends up actually losing her home and losing her family as yeah. well. So I suppose it's this idea that anybody could be touched if they made maybe the wrong decision or if something difficult happened to them. That, that it was everyone in society really went through it mm. in some way. The, the one uh, constant in your three books so far is Claire Boyle, your, your uh, detective. Uh, yeah. Your, your detective, yeah. And uh, I was reading somewhere that uh, they reckon that, that women writers of crime fiction are kind of owning the genre at the moment because they don't believe in their characters to the same extent, perhaps, that male crime writers do. What would you think of that? 
Um, I don't know, Claire, it's interesting. When I wrote my first book, which was set on a parenting website, it was going to be what they call a standalone, a, a classic psychological thriller, but mm. it needed a police character. And I wrote her and then I made her pregnant, right. um, which made it easy for her to infiltrate the world of the parenting website. And then, of course, I ended up falling in love with her and she became a series character. But what I was trying to do was write the traditional male cop and make him a woman. Mm. And what I mean by that is, in traditional crime fiction, the male devotes everything to his job and often mm. kind of it's almost expected that he leaves the family behind you know it's quite normal in male crime fiction to see the the cop maybe not going to the birthday party yeah, or you know forgetting his wife's there, birthday it? yeah. but it's okay because he's solving the crime and i was thinking well if you had a woman taking on that level of work would people forgive her and figure they wouldn't and they yeah, don't yeah. so she's caught between that she's a great mother but she's also a great a great Garda you know yeah. and she wants to do both and at, by the time book three comes along their daughter is, is a year and a half and um, it's her husband actually is kind of struggling to cope with what's going on rather than her people have said to me is she struggling with maternal guilt and she's not she's actually quite happy with how she's managing things yes. but the husband who had said all along that he'd be the main man in the home yeah. is actually having difficulties so with he's struggling son. more so with I think the whole he concept. is more than her yeah. 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 yeah is there pressure because because there's been, I mean, your previous uh, titles have been bestsellers. You've won a string of awards. You've been nominated in the Irish Book Awards. Is there pressure releasing the third one? Um, no. Or does if, it give you extra well, confidence, maybe? There's... Writing a series character in particular, there is a, I wouldn't say confidence as such, but there is a sense that you're settling back into her. And yeah. I suppose there is a sense that yeah. readers have liked her before. So a little bit of confidence to that extent. But honestly... There's too much work in this to be thinking of, you know, awards mm. or sales. Or if you did, I think you'd be you'd be thinking about that and not the book. Yeah. And the only way to write a book, particularly when when I'm working as well, is to just lock yourself away in the kitchen for an hour or two every night and just do it and not be thinking about anything other than the end, you know. Brilliant. Because again, yeah. if you started to think about what's going to happen to it, then then that would be the yeah. focus. So yeah. you just sit there in the kitchen with a laptop and, and do your best. You well, know? one bad turn is now available to buy. Crowley, thanks, thanks a million for your Thank time you. and best Thank of luck you, with the sales.